Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft and today I'm going to show you how to paint a lion using pastels on velour paper. Uh, if you've never tried this before, velour paper is an excellent surface for pastels. It gives you lovely soft textures and allows for a build-up of many layers without smudging the layers that you've already painted. So the pastels I'm going to be using are the <coughs> square-shaped hard pastels, like this. The corners are excellent for doing fine details like whiskers and so on. And for the overall painting of the colour, these round pastels that are a little bit harder than most soft pastels. They are classed as a soft pastel, but the law paper does prefer harder pastels, which means the pigment sticks in the fibres much, much better. So to begin with, what I've done is I've done a little uh, freehand sketch using the ivory pastel, this one. Uh, which is easier uh, to remove or to paint over should you want to correct something. Uh, the thing is with the law paper it doesn't allow you to rub out what, when you make your mark on there it sticks. So if you're uncertain <coughs> and you want to do a freehand sketch do it with a white pastel or with an ivory pastel quite light and you might not be able to see this uh, terribly well on the screen but if you do it quite light it means you can rub it down or you can paint over. So once we're happy with our preliminary proportion sketch, then what I can do then is take the hard black pastel and sketch in reasonably lightly the uh, dark features that I want. So eyes, nose, mouth, uh, things like that, dark shadows in the fur. <coughs> Don't go too heavy too soon because what you want to do is build up the tones, build up the layers bit by bit. So let's begin with uh, the shape of the nose, somewhere e fairly easy to start. So I'm using a slightly rounded corner of the black pastel and happy with the shape that I've got at the minute. So just going around the nostril area and getting the outline of the nose. I'm just going to fill that in quite lightly as you can see, not too heavy to start with. We can build up the darks and build up the details bit by bit. It's very much a process of building up. Uh, so I don't want to do too much fine detail too soon. While we're here, we can put in uh, whisker follicles and a couple of little sink glands there. So I've marked out the spaces in between where the whisker follicles are going to go. And remember, with cats, you've always got four rows of whisker follicles. Not too dark on the lion, unlike a tiger or a leopard. One, two, three, and four. So just keep them fairly light to begin with. Notice when you rub the pastel once it's on, it doesn't move. That's one of the great things about the law paper, you don't need to fix it at all. So that's just sketching the outline of the mouth. Nice and soft to begin with. And then the lip, extra parts of the lip, the hangover if you like of the lip, just dropping over the chin there. Almost like a jowl. Again, keep it fairly light to start with. Think of this uh, more like um, a representative charcoal sketch. So then we can uh, do other details of the eye. Well, start with the uh, corner of the eye with a tear duct, and that's like a channel. So it's got dark edges with a little bit of paler grey inside. It's all going to be grey tones to begin with. The inside of the eye the upper eyelid and the lower rim. The lower rim is always rounded. The upper eyelid will change depending on uh, how, how much concentration there is, how surprised the animal might be and so on. And the pupil looking slightly back. Again, if we do it lightly we can change these angles a little bit. <coughs> so that will do for the eye to begin with. So other dark bits that we can concentrate on when well, we've got the ear, uh, which is sketched in just about here. That's the back of the ear, and then a little ridge before we get a darker shadow there, and of course the inside inner part of the ear, which is quite dark. About that shape. Just underneath the ear where we have a little bit of fur hanging in front of it. That will softly define the ear. And the idea about this one is we want to keep everything nice and soft atmospheric. So 
So it's not going to be about too much detail. It's more going to be about soft tones and soft colours. Uh, <coughs> around the eyebrows. So centre of the eyebrow, you always have a little sort of teardrop darker mark. And this paler each side, which gives you that rounded, protruding feel to it. A little bit of shadow on that side. The forehead, from about here, where we get a ridge between the eyebrow on the opposite side and then this side of the eyebrow. And we get a little ridge for the centre of the forehead. Again, try to keep it fairly light. And give it a good rub in. The rub actually does several things. It pushes the pastel into the fibres of the paper, makes it stick. But also it softens the tone a little bit. So if you're too heavy on the tone, giving it a good rub will soften it. Then we've got some fur texture. <coughs> so to begin the fur texture, what we do is concentrate on the shadows in between different clumps of fur. So we've got some shadows there and so on. Now if you want to order the little workshop set that goes with this, you will get a, a pre-outlined sheet of the law, so you won't have to worry about doing the initial sketch with the ivory pastel if you don't want to. Or if you're working um, on your own with your own velour and your own pastels, then you might want to have a go at the freehand sketch first. And you can break all these shapes down into basic geometric shapes, angles, lines and so on, which you can find on my lion drawing tutorial. So we'll have a darker shadow behind the ear, coming down into the long, the crinkly, fluffy mane behind it. This is where the, the fur breaks from the top of the head, which is like a bit of a crest, breaking down into longer, more crinkly, soft parts of the mane around that. So what I'm doing is basically stroking in with the appropriate length and the fur going in the right direction, some nice soft shadows. I don't want this to be too heavy. And we can embellish this later on with a little bit more detail. If you think about uh, the foundation of any painting really, this, this is going to be your foundation. I call it the tonal sketch when I'm using pastel, but it equates to a monochrome underpainting. Same as if you were painting in oils using the classic oil painting technique, or even with acrylic. So, looking for the darker bits of mane, the shadows, we've got two sort of clumps here, with a shadow in between. And then we have a little bit of a darker part of the mane lower down. Just keep nice, long, soft, fluid strokes. Take that up to about here. And we have the lion's back coming over this direction. It's sort of facing, you know, we've got his head turned to the left. So we can see his back here, his hip about here and so on. So we'll just put a little soft shadow where you can see the edge of the hip going into the lion's side. So those are all the details of such that we need to sketch out. We don't need much more than that. What we're going to do next, still using the black pastel, is uh, to add some tones in. So what we're trying to create is a monochrome underpainting or a tonal sketch which gives us shape and form. So we'll start um, around the eye I think this time. Underneath the eye we have the cheekbone about here which is going to be highlighted with a little bit of ivory. Um, a lot of big cats do have paler coloured fur just below the eye, on top of the cheekbone pretty much, which uh, reflects the sun so they don't get too much sun going directly into the eye. So we'll give that a soft tone. You can use the side of the pastel or you can use, like I've done, created a little sort of angled edge on there for smaller areas. We use the side for larger areas. Um, what this gives us when we start to add tone is underlying form. So it gives us anatomical structure, such as the hollow in the cheekbone here, going back to the mane. 
always give it a good rub when you're finished. Um, other shadows that we've got, so we've got some shadows on this side of the nose. If our light is going to be on the left hand side, which will be highlighting the nose, then we want some little shadows where you get the lumps and bumps over here, and then just above the tip of the nose, coming back away from those lumps and bumps up towards the eye. You see, bit by bit, we're aiming to get this sort of representative, almost three-dimensional charcoal sketch. Now, when I'm working around the fur, short fur or long fur, what I, what I don't want to do is do long strokes of shading like that. If you do shorter strokes where you've got shorter fur, then any little marks you get will start to indicate fur texture. So, in, in effect, you're actually producing fur texture at the, at the same time as doing this. So it all helps in the long run. So, do soft shadows around here. Now you could, of course, if you didn't want to use uh, colour on there, you could just do the whole thing in monochrome. We have this lovely sandy lion coloured paper, so the book colour, which is ideal, because then if you could just do the whole thing in monochrome with a, uh, a black pastel using grey tones. You could put some ivory highlights on it and leave it like, like it is. But we are going to put some colour on this one. Uh, a little bit of sh shading around there. And then we've got the cheek here, which is, uh, I started off with a little oval shape. And I've got to remember that that, that cheek protrudes a little bit. So behind it, we are going to get a little bit of a shadow. It's like when you draw uh, a ball, a rugby ball in this case, to make it look three-dimensional, you have got to have a shadow, a mid-tone and a highlight. So that's what we're aiming for, shadows, mid-tones and highlights. For now, the highlight will be uh, the bare paper, and we'll put on some stronger highlights later on. So don't worry about adding highlights at this stage. If you do add highlights at this stage, then your likelihood is you're going to pollute uh, the colours that you're going to put on next. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep the colours nice and fresh, nice and uniform, and worry about highlights later on. So, not too bad there. And then we'll use the flat side of the pastel just to add some gentle tones in the shadow parts or the darker parts of the mane. Again, observing the essential length and direction. So as we get length and direction of the fur, then we've pretty much got it. So softer shadows around here, if the light's shining through it, it's going to give us softer shadows anyway. Some gentle strokes. Remember, the key thing when you're working with velour is you can always add more tone. You can always add darker tones, lighter tones, you can always add more colour. So the best to play safe especially if you've not used it before, and go for much lighter tones, lighter layers of colour than you think you're going to need. Of course, you can always add a little bit more later on. So a nice soft shadow between these clumps of fur, and then it gets darker down towards the chest. So everything is still nice and soft just as we want it. Make sure that we've got all the bits separated, the ear, the eye, the nose, exactly where we want them. I'm also going to put a bit of tone into the eye, if I remember, because we don't want to leave it blank. Because the eyes are always set well back, so if we put a little bit of tone in there to start with, don't be afraid of doing that. Now that's going to make sure the, the eye itself, when we add a little bit of colour, is going to be a bit darker. Finally, we'll just do a little bit of tone where the chin meets the lip. And then we'll start to add some colour. Well, finally, I'll just put a little bit more tone on the back end here, just to let it fade out into the corner. So that should do us. Give it a rub. So next thing, we're going to add some base colours. And this will actually uh, subdue some of the tones you've got a little bit, but don't worry about that because we can bring those back. Uh, 
it's important to, to remember that base colours are another foundation. So you could potentially do 100 layers of pastel on top of this if you wanted to. So you imagine after two or three layers your base colours will start to disappear a little bit. Uh, so in order to give them a lot of strength and a lot of depth, make sure your colours are, are fairly strong, fairly vibrant. When I'm doing a warm painting like this, I tend to use no more than three base colours, uh, two warm and one cool if I can find it. So the colours I'm going to use here are this one, which is the sort of nice golden brown or dark orange in effect. Then uh, we've got a, a standard orange. And for the cool colour, to give it balance, we've got a purple. Okay, now strange as it may seem, the purple is ideal for shadow areas. It kind of makes your greys look greyer. And it goes very, very well. It complements the oranges and browns beautifully. <clears throat> so, two warm, one cool colour. Complementary cool colour, that is. Let's start with the purple. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, all the sort of mid-tone grey bits, which are the beginnings of our shadow areas, this will give them a little dusting of the purple. Now remember, these pastels are a little bit softer. So don't press on at all. Just very very lightly we don't want to flood it with purple but at the same time we do want to see traces of it the purple is an ideal color for painting shadows in warm pictures you may have seen purple uh, painted in I mean, watercolor paintings of mediterranean scenes and things like that it makes a great balance for all the lovely warm tones that you might have so just hints of purple in the shadows where we've got that mid grey tone. And again, we can add some darker tone onto that later on to subdue it if we need to. Uh, just a little touch down here. And also in these shallow areas, cool areas such as the lips and the tip of the nose. And again, that purple just helps to cool it down from beneath. Uh, teared up. So I've got a purple sort of touch in the centre and then just a little hint around these softer shadows that we've got around the face. Just a hint will do. So let's give it a rub. Nice good rub. Really push the pastel into the fibres. You'll notice of course it's not moving. Everything stays exactly where you put it, which is ideal. <coughs> Next thing we'll add the warm colours. So I've got two warm colours for this. First one is this sort of golden brown colour, um, which is going to be our overall lion colour, if you like. So we'll start with that one. Uh, the orange is going to be reserved for uh, the sort of brighter sunlit tones, if you like. So first of all, with our golden brown pastel, we'll go for uh, sort of mid-tone highlights, if you like. What I'm going to do is where I've got, and you can see on the reference photograph, which will be up on the screen or with your pack if you send for it, and you'll see from there where we've got some highlights. The highlights are going to be in ivory. <coughs> Don't worry if you go over these highlights with the, the colours because you can always bring them back. Um, but what I tend to do at this stage is kind of avoid the highlights so I can see them later on. So anything that's sort of mid-tone away from the shadow areas, you get a little dusting of this sort of golden brown colour. A little bit just underneath the lip as well. So around, in fact you can go over the grey. Lions do have uh, sort of grey-brown fur anyway, so if you go over the greys as well, but so far I haven't got any purple in, that's a perfect lion colour. A little bit around the crest on top of the head, around the ear. And this is referred to often as blocking out. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm not trying to go around the edge of the ear or anything like that. I'm literally just going over, almost like with a one inch paper, blocking the colour in wherever I think it should go. So we have general lion colour in the main here. We'll put some brighter orange on the top in a bit. Don't worry if you happen to have any 
The raw paper showing through. Of course, again, it's uh, another warm lion colour almost. So continue using the side of the pastel, nice and flat, as flat as you can get it. But again, another tip: if you think you're catching some edges, or you're likely to catch some edges of the pastel. And as long as you're following the direction, the length of the fur, it shouldn't be a problem. You'll just get some additional fur strokes in there. We'll bring that all the way down to this sort of darker part of the mane. And just a little check, I think that should be sufficient. And so I do want to keep this fairly soft, so I'm not going to be too heavy on the colour. That's why I don't mind a little bit of paper showing through. And, and finally, we're going to use the standard orange, which will look like a cadmium orange. Again, using the side of the pastel, just to get some brighter tones in. So I imagine the sun is maybe shining from the back, sunset or dawn or something like that. So it's going to give a, a bit of a warm glow to some of this fur. Starting at the top this time. Nice little warm glow shining through the fur from the back and here and there around the edge. Now you don't have to rigidly stick to uh, what I've done in this. If you're using the, the photograph of the original painting, you can vary it a little bit. And that's the great thing about painting. You don't, you don't have to rigidly stick to your reference. You can just vary it. So if you put a bit of orange in a slightly different place, it doesn't really matter. As long as you bear in mind what you're trying to achieve, which is a nice sort of atmospheric sunset painting or something like that. And we really want the some of these colours to shine, like the orange in particular, it gives a, a nice shine to the whole thing. So around the ear we'll have a little touch. That kind of just warms up that golden brown a little bit. So without it being too too strong or too fierce it just gives it that little extra. And of course when it comes to painting you're allowed to do what you want to do. So I think the original photograph was taken in the sanctuary in Kent and of course that lighting would have been totally different. So you can invent your own lighting. This is what I always like to do. Artistic license. So a little bit of the orange down towards the darker part of the mane, and then one or two little bits in around the face. So just little hints, a little bit there, a little bit around here on the forehead, just where again where the light's catching the edge of the forehead perhaps. And in the highlighted parts or the rounder parts of the cheek, so just below the cheekbone. And a little bit around the orange, a little bit around the, a little bit of orange I should say, around the cheeks, underneath the lip, and around the tip of the nose. So I'm also going to put a, a, just a touch of orange over that purple on the tip of the nose just to sort of knock it back a little bit. So it's got a kind of cool undertone with a bit of warmth over the top. So that's more or less our second foundation on the painting complete. Uh, apart from the, the background. Now in the background what I want to do is just almost create a, a suggestion of the sunset behind it. So without filling the background in at all, just going to use the side of the orange pastel, taking it into the edge of the lion, because I'm going to be painting some highlights over the top anyway. So just taking that into the edge a little bit, using sort of diagonal strokes, just for a dynamic really, a suggestion of sunset lighting, but just it adds a little bit of uh, something in the background, anchors him to the background, but without being over fussy. And the same on this side. So it's nice, 
and also it's, don't forget let's go inside the edge a little bit we'll pull away from just inside the edge ivory will paint over that easily when we come to do our final highlight so don't worry about going into the edge better that than having a sort of artificial halo around it if you try to go too close and don't quite get there Uh, should be enough. You can always add a, add a little bit more colour later on if you feel it needs it, but you certainly need to get uh, some of the background behind the line at this stage. Okay, so that's uh, the two foundations completed, the tonal sketch and the colour. Now we can start to think about details. Details always begin with your darkest pastel, in this case the black. And I'm going to start with the main. So we're going to go from dark to mid-tone to light. So beginning at the back of the ear, this is where I can begin to shape some of these clumps of fur, the shorter ones, the longer ones, and so on, just a little bit, a little bit more carefully. I still don't want to go too sharply detailed on that. But as you see, what I'm doing is bringing out the shadow tones in between these clumps of fur, and that in turn starts to show you individual clumps of fur. It's kind of like negative painting in, in a sense. So around the edge of the ear, we'll just carefully get the shape of the edge of the ear. And then once you've got that shape, bring the dark bit back from the shadow and create a little bit more texture. So you can have bits of fur or clumps of fur in the main, but slightly going kind of rebels if you like they're going away from the mainstream curl out like that and if you add even later on when we do the highlights if you have some of these um, clumps of fur going in slightly different directions it all adds to the realism if you want to paint more fur make it more and more detailed you just repeat this layer two three five ten twenty times even if you'd like to do a lot of detail. I don't think it needs it on this one. I think this, this particular painting works well uh, just with less detail and more sort of atmospheric tones and colours. So the centre of the ear, make that a little bit darker. Um, this doesn't have to be your final darts, by the way, because we'll address them again at the very end. So don't press on still. So keep in mind that uh, less is better because you can add your strong tones, your light tones, you can even add more colour later if you feel it needs it. So bit by bit, build it up softly and your finished result will be much softer as a result anyway. So you see we're getting now just a few sort of more individual hairs or tighter clumps if you like. And we've got that break again, we've got a little bit of a fringe, then it starts to go out, and then the fur starts to go around from there. Again, we can make some little changes along here, we can have some bits of fur that are slightly more curved, maybe being blown slightly by the breeze. And either, as you're working through, as I'm doing now, you give it a good rub, or you can wait till the end if you prefer. And if you keep it softer, less detailed around the edge, let it kind of fade out into the background a little bit. But it still needs some visible texture, even though it's not highly detailed. And we have the main sort of wandering off the back like that. We'll draw in there perhaps and maybe just lifting off the back and again you can be creative with it so carry on down the main in the same way picking out some of the slightly more detail if you imagine where you're kind of cutting out these clumps of fur and the black pastel it would be your scissors and you're cutting out those shapes finer and finer bit by bit until you're happy with the amount that you've got. So you can have big shapes with less detail, or you can have smaller shapes that represent more detail, finer detail. 
So length and direction of fur, that's the important thing to remember. Try not to do long strands of mane with short strokes, otherwise it looks like it's kind of broken up. So keep it nice and flowing, long flowing. And then we come down to the darker part. We'll do this little bit first, these two clumps. Two clumps are hanging down just below the ear, so we can define those even more. And you see what's happening here particularly is these two clumps of fur are now being brought out from the dark shadows in and around. And we'll continue down to our darker part of the moon. Disguises some of that purple. You may see by now that a lot of that purple has been disguised, but it is lurking around underneath, which adds a little bit of more depth to black, especially black pastel, on its own can be quite flat. If you've got a bit of colour underneath, uh, sort of cool nose or something like that, then it actually stops it looking too flat or helps to stop it looking too flat. <coughs> a little bit more shading down here away from the light and then we can do the details around the head and the face. So what we'll do is uh, we'll leave the eye for a minute let's go back to the tip of the nose and get the nostril shape. So the nostril shape starts at the top there we've got a bit of flesh hanging over the nostril and the nostril itself will be that shape. So the hard edge is at the top there's no hard edge underneath, it's a soft edge where it, that sort of hole of the nostril disappears or fades out into the cheek. And so a little bit more shading on the tip. Don't forget of course we'll be revisiting these finer details right at the end to bring out anything that we feel needs to bring out more. So the lip overhanging the lip like that. It's a case of refining the detail bit by bit, strengthening the tones bit by bit. The risk of follicles and then a couple of little scent glands there. Again, keep them fairly light, not too dark. Make sure you've got four rows. And then we'll do a little bit more fur texture before we do the eye. We'll do the eye sort of as a finished project all by itself in a minute. So have a look at the shadows between the ridges on the nose. They may not need darkening, but they might. So just uh, give it a, a little check. And other textured shadows, so below the cheekbone perhaps, using the end of the pastel, that little angled end. I'm not going to bother doing individual fur strokes on fur as short as this. The velour paper will almost give you that velvety short fur texture, so we don't need to overdo it. So if you just do little strokes like that, where your shadows occur, away from the cheekbone, up to the edge of the mane, and we can cut out a bit of that mane too. Short strokes like that. Gently, gently bringing those shadows back into play around here and then around below the eye, coming down to the nose. Again, short strokes to give you that kind of texture. You can make the shadows as strong as you like. There's no hard and fast rules on that. Now I, something like this, I like those shadows to be a little bit softer. It's kind of more atmospheric, I think. And try not to be tempted when you're doing this at home to put your highlights in too soon. Uh, if nothing else, like I said earlier on, you can disturb the colour if you put them in too soon. But also, I like to think of it as a, a treat sort of magical treat at the end of the painting when you put your highlights in it brings it all together. I think it's worth waiting for. So 
a little bit of shading over that orange on the nose. Add a bit more there. And then you can, of course, add more colour over the top of that because you think it's too grey. So, for example, if I then take my lion colour back, which is this golden brown, if I want to take some of that grey off, bear in mind that lions do have sort of greyish brown fur anyway, I could simply go over that again, the ear, and use this as a, a, a mid tone for the fur. So you can either use the side of the pastel for large areas like this, or again you can use the end of the pastel to do individual strokes. Individual strokes equating to 20 or 30 hairs at once, something like that. And this process you can do over and over again until you've got as much fur painted as you want to paint. So again, we'll let the back and the rear end fade out. This is the bit people are most interested in. So again, if you want to do a little bit of mid-tone or mid-colour fur texture in there, just use the end of this golden brown pastel. It's actually a dark orange. Over the grey tones you just put in, you see a bit by bit you can soften those tones, you can actually add more perceived fur, even if it's not actual fur. It kind of looks like you've got more. Give it a good rub. Then we'll just uh, review the orange a little bit. This will be the lightest tone on the fur. So anything, any fur that's around this section, which is where we want to see more detail perhaps. I guess that's what people are more interested in looking at. So we can use the end of this round pastel to do 20 or 30 hairs at once, that kind of thing. around the edge of the ear. You can imagine if you repeat these layers even two or three times you're going to get much much more fur detail. If that's what you want to have a go at then that'll be fine. So just a little bit more around here I think. 20 or 30 hairs at once just to boost that colour as well. Because remember, each time you put a grey layer over it, you're kind of subduing the colours. So I just want to boost the colour here and there in the central area. And that just gives us some more fur texture as well. So it's a win-win situation there. So a little bit more around the tip of the nose. And those warm colours, also they come forward visually, so they're going to help to bring those features out towards the viewer. A little bit more on his cheekbone. And the top of the head, around the eyebrows. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look at the eye. So, so far. In the eye, all we've done is uh, got our original sketch. We haven't done much else with it. We put a little bit of tone in there, but that's about it. So what we can do now is concentrate on the eye a little bit closer. First thing to do is add a little bit of colour. So we don't worry about, worry about uh, drawing around the, the rims or anything like that at this stage, because you'll only have to tidy them up again. So over the whole of the eyeball, if we just add, first of all, that darker orange, the golden brown, as a general eye colour. Then what we'll do is we'll think about highlights and reflections. So if our light's coming from the top left, what it's going to do is pass through the eye, which is rounded on the surface, and it will highlight the iris on the other side. That's the coloured part of the eye, this is golden brown. So it's going to highlight that just on the opposite side from where the light's coming from. In this case I'll use the bright orange just to give a little hint of a highlight there. Also what it will do, it will 
shine off the outer coating of the eye as it pops down there and give a reflection. We'll put the reflection in at the very end. What we'll do next is take the corner of the black pastel and then just tidy it up a little bit. So the pupil, the upper eyelid and the lower rim. Just tidy that shape up and the corner of the eye coming down to the tear duct and the edges of the tear duct with that sort of purple channel underneath and then we'll pop the reflection in so the reflection using the corner of our ivory pastel the sharper corner the smaller bit and pop that in where you have the light coming from so coming from the left just to the left of the pupil like so okay so the final stage after that after you've done as much detail as you want is just to look at where perhaps you want to bring features out so the eye nose and mouth perfect example a little bit of the fur texture and so on and that's called contrast so by using the darkest which is the black and the lightest the ivory at this stage you can actually bring those features out a little bit more so we'll come back to the nose and mouth in a minute First thing we want to do is use the black first and maybe just bring the ear out visually and anything around the ear. So this is the, your final, not the final chance, but this is the final stage of adding darks, not too darks. So adjusting your tones right at the end, the dark, dark and light tones. Remember we're still not going to put the highlights on just yet. So anything around the ear and to the left, maybe a, a little bit of the darker strands of fur down here. And then the features themselves. Uh, lions do have scars on the nose. If you want to add any scars, you can, you can do them at this stage. So a couple of little scars there. We're always kind of fighting anyway. It gives them a little bit of character. Make sure the eye is nice and crisp. We want to see that. And then the nostril. As you can see, when you do these dark tones at the very end, finer detail, stronger tones, the eye and the nose start to creep forward. There'll be a couple of these blister follicles as well. And not forgetting the mouth or the dark lips. Not too dark. I aim for kind of a, a dark grey at the most rather than too much black. So we can sit back, have a little squint at that, make sure when you squint you can see those important features. And then we'll do our final highlights. So the hi final highlights are going to be in ivory. Um, we'll start with the fur around the edges and then work back to the face. So for the edges we can use the width of the uh, ivory pastel which is about a quarter of an inch there. And softly this is a softer fur, visually softer fur anyway. Softly drag that from the darker part of the mane inside to the outside over that orange background. You can see that ivory paints over the orange very easily. In fact, it warms it up as well. So if it's not too heavy, you'll get a nice warm ivory tone. And then we'll go along here, down towards the back. Not too strong, but strong enough so that you can see it. We don't want to make the highlights away from the important area, which is the face. We don't want to make these too strong, otherwise it could distract. So keep it fairly soft. And add it bit by bit. It's the same as uh, what we talked about all the way through, which if you start off with a a soft ivory tone you can always add more if you think it needs it so start soft light and add more as you need so we'll do a soft highlight using the quarter inch width of the pastel across the back so the light is just catching it and just a broad area rather than any fine detail remember this is short velvety fur so that's what the paper will give you and a softer highlight along the hip. So 
use it like a quarter inch paintbrush just to bring out or show the underlying shape rather than any fine detail. So I'll continue to come to the bit on the left in a minute. We'll continue with some of the textured fur on the end part of the mane. Again, away from the detail part, keep it fairly thick, fairly muted, not too sharp. We can always use a rounded corner to add some straggly bits in like that if you want to. Remember if you add just the one or two the hairs that are going away from the overall shape and movement of the mane, it actually gives you a sense of almost being more fair painted than you've actually done. It creates a kind of, that kind of impression. People always see the highlights first, so the highlights count for a lot more. So just thicken that up a little bit. Maybe add one or two stragglers on this side to, to fill it out. And then over the orange. And again, if you do it lightly, I'm using more of the rounded corner now to get you know, 10 or 15 hairs at once, maybe something like that, or even individual hairs. If you use your, your ivory pastel lightly, you'll pick up some of the tone from underneath. So you'll get warm ivory or you'll get cool ivory. So it all depends on what you've got underneath. And I'm keeping it light. So we've got this little struggling bit here, which I started earlier on. We can make that a little bit more detailed. And start to get even more details as we work around to the face. And the face being last, probably the most important part, will have the most detail. So a little bit more on there. I just want to break up. Now, if you've got a hardish or obvious line that you want to break up, like I had around here, then this is the ideal tool to do it. You're highlighting pastel. That's a little bit better. And again, leaning back and squinting at it, I can probably sense this once. A touch more highlight around the back. Oftentimes when you look at it close, or too close up when you're working on it, the highlights and other things tend to look stronger than they really are, especially the tones. So always try and lean back and squint at it. Screw your eyes up. Give it the squint test. And you'll, you'll know by doing that whether it passes the squint test or not. So working around to the face, there's some highlights on the ends of these clumps of fur. So slightly sharper, slightly rounded corner of the pastel I'm using, not a sharp corner. The sharp corners are reserved for ultra fine detail like the whiskers. And always give a little bit of a rub at the base or the start of your stroke, which helps to bury the roots. It leaves the ends of those clumps of fur nice and sharp. And we have these long, two long clumps of fur uh, hanging just below the ear. Again, try and keep the ends nice and sharp. One or two stray bits coming off there. And gently rub away the roots. And the same on this one. Almost the individual strokes, individual hairs, as you can see. Uh, feel free to add actual individual straggly bits or crinkly bits hanging off there. It does give the illusion of having more detail. But remember, this is not so much about fine detail, more about an atmospheric painting. Just notice a little bit on there that what's breaking up. Here, 
keep checking and rechecking your terms all the way through. Don't immediately be satisfied with the terms that you've just put on. Always review it. Just soften that a little bit. And then down to the face. So odd little highlight, soft ivory highlight over your oranges to give again an impression of texture. Use the rounded corner for that. Uh, the forehead. So the opposite side of the forehead, side furthest away from us. Get a nice soft highlight on that. We'll do the outline as, as a whole in a minute, but first of all I want to concentrate on the inner part. So we've got the eyebrow, slightly darker bit in the centre, and slightly paler around the edges. Again, soft use of the eyes, we will do that. A little bit of on the eyelid, perhaps, and inner part of the eye. There's usually a little bit of paler fur there. And not forgetting the paler fur on the cheekbone, just below the eye, which follows the curve of the cheekbone, like that. Just a little gentle stroke will do for here. And the lighter side of our rugby ball shaped cheek, this is the darker side, mid tone highlight on that side. And again, we can follow the curve of the nostril down into the cheek between the whisker follicles. Start off light, remember, add more. Highlight in this case, if you feel it needs it. So maybe I'll switch to a rounded corner and just tidy that leading left hand edge just a little bit. A little hint of a cheek on the other side of the nose. And then we have the chin. Pale fur, it's not white fur, it's very pale fur and ivory is ideal for this. So we've got our general tone and colour underneath, so all we need to do really, with a slightly rounded corner, not too sharp, is just go around the edge, adding a little bit of fur texture. We'll do individual chin whiskers right at the end of that sharp corner, so just wait for those. Soft highlight on the mane, just coming down into the chest. Give them a little bit of a, a nice warm glow around that area. So, final highlights. <coughs> now, final highlights are going to be fairly strong because we want the light to shine down on his profile and really make that profile work. Let's start with the soft highlights on the top. So, pressing on a little bit more, bear in mind you're highlighting different things. Here at the top of the head we're highlighting the soft fur, the softer fur. So I'm going to use uh, the wider part of the pastel, about a quarter of an inch width for that. Just around the edge of that orange. Lift it off the background. And then give it a little rub where it joins. I sort of lean back and squint. So if you think it's not strong enough, we can add a little bit more. But now's the time to just put a, a tiny bit more pressure on when you're doing these final impact highlights. So working down the head. Now we started do it, uh, sculpting the head almost, uh, other side of that uh, ridge. So now's the time just to get the very edge of that shape sorted out. Even right at the end, you know, you can change the whole shape of the nose if you wanted to with a carefully drawn highlight, which is why another good reason we should leave them till the end. So a little highlight on the inside of that ridge, stronger highlight on the edge. And using a slightly rounded corner, a little bit more pressure to bring that out. And we can go for all the lumps and bumps in the nose. Again, a couple of little highlights on the inside of that to show the 
three dimensional shape. So a little bit softer. And around the edge, what we'll do is use a rounded corner and try and get that. Of course, there's a highlighting bone here, of course. Try and get a nice, strong, but not too sharp highlight. So it's fairly strong because I'm using a slightly rounded corner and I'm putting more pressure on it, make sure it stands off. Then go around the tip of the nose as well. Again, which is just a fleshy part, so slightly rounded corner, a bit more pressure is going to give us that fleshy substance. Around the cheeks, more pressure. So offside cheek there and the near side cheek there. And then slightly more texture around the edge of the chin. We can use the sharper corner now if we want to, <coughs> to add some chin whiskers. A more authentic look. And <coughs> before we do the final whiskers, what I'll do is just go around the eye again. If your hand has been resting on a certain area, like around the eye, you may find it sort of doubles your highlights a little bit. So just double check before you finish. That, that side of the eyebrow wants to be a little bit stronger. <coughs> and then finally he needs some whiskers. So the whiskers are basically growing out of the uh, whisker follicles here. Uh, not too, too strong, not too thick on a lion, but what they all have in common is, all cats this is, that they're shorter and finer at the front, so a few little strokes with a sharp corner of pattern like that, and they get longer and thicker towards the back. So I have so a nice relaxed whiskers, which is angled slightly downwards, longer and thicker at the back, just basically stroke something like that, rub away at the roots, and if you can still see the roots, then the best thing you can do is take up your black pastel and very softly at the ends of the whiskers and where they start, where you've got the whisker follicles, just put a little soft touch like that. Give them a rub, check for any further refreshing marks you need to make with the black. I think the eye could probably just do with a little bit of a lift. And perhaps just in between the whiskers around the mouth, just a bit of a, a lift like that. And uh, we'll call that finished for today. Just one more little bit. The point about now is you can tinker away with that for as long as you like. Whether you make any improvements or not remains to be seen. But this is a, a fairly simple but um, reasonably simple but atmospheric sketch. So we'll sign that off. And we'll say thanks for watching. There'll be uh, plenty more basic drawing and in-depth tutorials coming soon. If you do have a go at this, whether you're working uh, on your, with your own pastels uh, on the blank sheet of law or whether you're working from one of our workshop kits, which is shown, which will be shown on the, at the end of the video, feel free to post your results on my Facebook page, which is also showing on there. So visit the website for the kits, Facebook page for showing the results of your work, and we'll see you next time.